Can we please rise up as we take our leadership creed? One to go. I'm a leader, a visionary, a planner, a hard worker. I'm disciplined and loyal. I'm diligent and detailed. I'm focused and committed. I don't give up until I succeed. I'm an example to people around. I'm an answer to the challenges of today. I'm a solution for my generation. I'm a light bearer with a kingdom mandate. I am a leader. Praise the Lord. This morning, we're going to be looking at the topic, compassion. Our Father and the Lord has been teaching us on the bowels of mercy, and it's important to know that in this season, if we need the help of God, we have to show mercy. And one of the things we're going to be talking about in showing mercy is compassion. What does it mean to show compassion? Compassion literally means to suffer together. Now, among emotion researchers, it is defined as the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. Now, compassion is not the same thing as empathy, although the concepts are related. While empathy refers to more generally to our ability to take the perspective of and feel the emotions of another person. Compassion is when those feelings and thoughts include the desire to help. Now, in Matthew uh, chapter 14, verse 14, the Bible says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And then what did he do? He healed their sick. In Matthew 15, 32, the Bible says that Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. He says, an emphasis of mine. He says, I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Jesus was moved with compassion and he acted. Now, research has shown that when we feel compassion, you know, our heart rate slows down. We secrete the bonding hormone oxytocin and regions of the brain linked to empathy, caregiving, and feelings of pleasure light up, which often results in our wanting to approach and care for other people. Now, what are the benefits of compassion? Number one, compassion makes us feel good, activates pleasure circuits in the brain, and leads to lasting increase in self-reported happiness. Number two, compassion can reduce the risk of heart disease by boosting the positive effects of the vagus nerve, which helps to slow our heart rate. Number three, it makes people rather more resilient to stress. It lowers stress hormones in the blood and saliva and strengthens the immune response. Number four, compassionate people's minds wonder less about what has gone wrong in their lives or what might go wrong in the future. As a result, they are happier. Number five, feeling compassion for one person makes us less vindictive towards others. Number six, employees who receive more compassion in their workplaces see themselves, their co-workers, and the organizations in a more positive light. Feeling more positive emotions like joy, contentment, and are more committed to their jobs. And then number seven, more compassionate societies, I mean, in, in, in the world, take care of their most vulnerable, assist other nations in need, and children who perform more acts of kindness are happier ones. Reflection. A young man and a boy checked into a hotel and were shown to their room. The two receptionists noted the quiet manner of the guests and the pale appearance of the boy. Now, later, the man and the boy ate dinner in the hotel restaurant. The staff again noticed that the two guests were very quiet and that the boy seemed disinterested in his food. Now, after eating... The father sent the boy to the room and the man came back to the reception and asked to see the manager. Now, the receptionist initially asked if there was a problem with the service of the room. 
and offered to fix things. But the man said that there was no problem of that sort. And he repeated his request. The manager was called and duly appeared. The man asked to speak privately and was taken into the manager's office. The man explained that he was spending the night in the hotel with his son who was seriously ill. Probably terminally so. So the boy was very soon to undergo therapy which will cause him to, you know, lose his hair. They had come to the hotel to have a break together and also because the boy planned to shave his head that night rather than feel that the illness was beating him. Now, the father said that he would be shaving his head too in support of his son. So he asked that the staff be respectful when the two of them came to breakfast with shaved heads. The manager assured the father that he would inform all the staff and that they will behave appropriately. Now, the following morning, the father and son entered the restaurant for breakfast. And there you are. They saw all the restaurant staff attending to their duties perfectly, normally, and all of them with shaved heads. Now, that is a very good example of compassion. They had empathy for the boy and they went further to show concern. That is compassion. Now question, are you a very compassionate person? Do you show compassion? Do you go ahead and act on the feelings of empathy which you have? In conclusion, it was Mother Teresa that said, I would rather make mistakes in kindness and compassion than work miracles in unkindness and hardness. And I'll leave you with this quote by John Boyan. He says, you have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. I repeat, you have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. I pray as you show compassion in this season, God will open the windows of heaven and you will find divine help as you show compassion. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>